Hey everyone and welcome back to another Unity AR tutorial. In this video we'll be improving on our image tracking project by overriding the default AR tracked image manager implementation that we looked at using in the previous video. And specifically what we'll be looking to do is by the end of the video implementing a system which will allow us to spawn a certain object based on which image is being looked at. So I'm going to quickly go over some of the assets and the setup that I've added to the project. You can of course use any image and models that you want in your project, but do be sure to pay attention to the naming conventions that I describe in the video. So the first thing you'll need to do to test loading multiple models is have at least two models in the project. For this, I've downloaded and imported a coffee cup and a mobile phone model. I've then turned these into new prefabs after testing their scale against a standard sphere that has been scaled down to 0.1 on all of the axes. This is also the first important thing to consider when naming the prefabs, as the names of these prefabs need to match the texture names that you'll be using and adding in the reference library. So I'll add the new images to the reference library now. I have a coffee texture and a phone texture, both named accordingly, so that I can leave the names as they come by default. And I can then tick to apply a specific size and keep the tracking at runtime, and then set the scales down to 0.1. And a quick note about these textures as well is that I don't have a printer, but I did want to use some custom images that were not being tracked on the screen. So what I've done is to take a picture on my phone of the items that I'd like to track. I've then cropped these down as cleanly as possible to a 1024 by 1024 ratio, and then imported them into Unity as usual. This works because the main thing that's being tracked are the patterns, so as long as there are clear points to track, these should work, just maybe not quite as well as flat 2D images. If you do have those available, it's still going to be the better choice. So there are the assets being used. There's one final thing that I did want to do before creating our new script, and that is if we return to the AR session origin, we want to be able to remove the tracked image prefab from the exposed variable, as if we leave this in place, we'll be spawning that prefab as well as the ones that we're going to be choosing in our own logic. Returning to our scripts folder, if we create a new c -sharp script called image tracking, and when the script is open, we just need to ensure that we once again have our using unityengine.xr and using unityengine.xr.ar foundations defined. And then above the class definition, we'll include a require component type of AR tracked image manager just for safety, as that we will need some references to that class and its functions a little bit later. Then for the variables, we'll want to serialize a private array of game objects, which we'll call placeable prefabs. This will act as the type of prefab that we want to be created at runtime, which for me will be the coffee and the mobile phone prefabs. Create a private dictionary holding a string and a game object that we'll call spawned prefabs. So this is why the naming convention that we choose is important, as we'll be using the string here to find a prefab from the placeable prefabs array of the same name to control their functionality, whether they're visible and things like that. We can then create a private AR tracked image manager named tracked image manager. So moving down a little bit, we can create an awake function. And in here, we want to start by getting and storing a reference to the tracked image manager using find objects of type and that type being AR tracked image manager. We then want to pre-spawn one of each of the placeable prefabs in our array, and we'll be filling that in the editor a little bit later, which is why we've made that a serialized field. So we use a for each loop looping through game objects called prefab in placeable prefabs. For each of these, we want to create a new game object called new prefab, which will instantiate using the current looped prefab, setting the scale to vector 3.0 so that it starts hidden and giving it a rotation of quaternion.identity just as a default rotation. We then need to make sure that the name is correct for searching it later, so we'll say new prefab.name equals prefab.name. And finally, we'll add this to the spawned prefabs dictionary, passing in the prefab.name and the new prefab as the reference. Next, we want to create a private on enable and private on disable and bind and unbind events to the tracked image changed in the tracked image manager. So this is why we have a reference to the tracked image manager and we'll bind these to a new function we're about to create called image changed. 
So image changed will be a private void and the tracked image changed function that we're binding to expects one property to be passed in of type AR tracked image changed events args. And we'll just be calling this one event args. Now this is basically going to allow us to call functionality based on which images are being tracked, removed or updated. And this is all being managed in the tracked image manager. So to begin, we want a for each loop for the AR tracked image type. We'll call the tracked image in event args dot added. And each time an image is added, we want to call another function that we'll be creating in a moment. And this one will be called update image with an argument of the tracked image that we currently have. We can then copy this entire for each loop and paste this same thing just below. Double click on the added and change this to updated and then make a final copy of the same for each loop, paste it below again, double click on the added again, and this time change it to removed. Now for this one, we do want to delete the call to update image here. And this time we'll just say spawned prefabs tracked image dot set active false. So this is just finding the current tracked image name, searching for that item in our dictionary, and then disabling the object of the same name. The final step is to create our new function. It will be a type of void named update image, passing in the AR tracked image, and we'll name this tracked image. Inside of the function, we first want to temporarily store the name of the tracked image. So we'll say string name equals tracked image dot reference image dot name. We also want to store a new vector three called position, which will be our tracked image dot transform dot position. These variables stored, we can then create a new game object named prefab, which will be from our spawned prefab dictionary selected by the name variable. We'll set the prefab.transform.position to be position and say prefab.setActive true so that we can see the prefab linked to the current image. And then finally, we're going to add a for each loop. For each game object, we'll name it go in spawned prefabs.values and we want to check if go.name isn't equal to name. And if this is true, then we'll say go.setActive false to ensure that all of the other prefabs we may have activated are set back to be hidden if we're looking at a new image. So back over in the Unity editor, we just want to add our new script to our AR session origin object. We need to increase the placeable prefab array count to be the number of images and prefabs that you want tracked. So for me, this is going to be two. Again, that's one for the coffee and one for the mobile. And then we can drop the prefabs into these slots. And that's it, we can now build and run this on our device. And once again, just to recap, we need to ensure that the name of the prefabs in the placeable prefabs array are the same as the names in the image in the reference image library. And this does include case sensitivity for the searches that we're providing. With that done though, and built to the device, you can see here, like I said, uh, you may notice a little bit of a tracking issue because I'm using essentially 3D objects trying to pretend they're 2D. Uh, you've got different issues, which will be like the uh, wood grain might look a little bit different in some cases. So it's not sure if it should follow the object when I pick it up. Uh, but you can see that if I look at the coaster, then a coffee mug is being spawned. And if I look at the wireless charging pad that I have, then a mobile phone is being spawned. And I think that's pretty cool. And like I said, besides the few issues where you can get things like shadows that weren't there when you took the image um, and it trying to work out if the surrounding information is also important um, in comparison to just the mug or the phone charger, uh, I think this is quite a cool way to do it as well as being able to take a picture of something on your device and then use that as the reference image. And you, you can now see how those images have been named, how they're linking to the prefab object names and it just gives you some freedom of what you can spawn at runtime to get some more interesting results. With all of that done, built and working on the device, as always, the only thing left to do is leave a like and share the content around if you enjoyed or found the video useful. And of course, do consider subscribing if you want to be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel. As ever though, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.